There aren't many things I like more than history. Family history, Virginia history, United States history. I just like it. And I can't think of anything more enjoyable than just reading about history. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over my coding history and I hope, I really hope tomorrow, once this video has been live for a solid 24 hours, I can go down in the comment section, just get a little layout of your coding history. 2015, what languages did you learn? What IDs did you use? What technologies did you use? 2016, same thing. 2017, same thing until 2020. Now it's 2020. If that's too much work for you, I'm gonna leave a poll right here. This I, you can click here, it's gonna pop out right there. Just give me a little And for the first time ever, I really hope this video idea is the one that everybody, all the other coding YouTubers decide to steal because I'd like to see their coding timeline too. My coding timeline starts at about 2013 or 2014. I'm not talking about back in middle school when me and my friends were script kiddies and made our Xbox avatar blue or had those 10th prestige MW2 lobbies. I'm not even talking about, you know, how proficient I was back then that I could install add-ons for my World of Warcraft game. No, none of that. When I first started typing up code is when I want to start the timeline. And it all started in 2013 with iOS development and ethical hacking. I went online, searched up the most popular iOS development course on Udemy, whatever that was at the time, right? And it was by Rob Percival. I completed about 15% of that course, you know, did my hello world, had my IDE Xcode all set up. But I don't know, I'm just not real good with accents and me learning a brand new thing. I just wanted to know what IDE to use, what coding language to use, just teach me that. I couldn't be bothered fighting through the accent. It wasn't that bad. I don't want to throw them under a bus. It wasn't that bad, but I just couldn't. I, I just couldn't. So I just ended up quitting. I, Nothing else, I was just working a regular job, what have you, I just quit. But then I saw this free ethical hacking course on Udemy, and I took that for about 5% of the course, if that, and then I, I quit that too. In 2014, things got real. I learned Java using the IDE NetBeans, and we did a lot of math. That was my first ever proper course. I took it at Virginia Wesleyan College. Now, now I only went there for like one semester, I didn't really like the overall experience, but this one course, it set me up perfectly for everything I've learned since. And just picture this. You walk into the classroom, it's a computer lab. You have the projector displaying up front, the teacher computer desk in the back, and then about four rows with six or eight computers in each. We'd be sitting there in our desk, right? So we'd be just like this on our own computer, ready to code. Our teacher would be in the back, typing up their own code as we could see up front. I'd be sitting there, we'd be copying exactly what she did as she explained it. But then we have to add on to it. She'd give us a, a task. Something was wrong, we wanted to make it this way. It was displaying this, we actually wanted to display that. Just something, something simple, but to actually get you thinking and solving that problem with code, the absolute best class I could have ever asked for because all of my other class, they weren't in computer labs. You would just sit there and kind of watch them code. You wouldn't be really be coding along with them unless you brought your computer, but it wasn't mandatory. This particular class just set me up. It was perfect. And I, you know, I'm not trying to brag here. In all honesty, I may have made some of my classmates kind of angry. I got done first with 99% of the tasks that we had to do in class, and I would just sit there not being able to contain my smile because of just how satisfying it was to solve it and just complete it first. That, I, like I said, I think I made some of my classmates kind of pissed off at me because I'd look around, I'd try to be, you know, just look around and then I'd start thinking about it, just smile and then crap. One person even said, you quit smiling, I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just reminiscing, good times. 2015 was by far the craziest year. There's just so much going on. Switched to a new college, so started learning C++ for their entry level programming language. And then I switched back to Java later in a year. Oh, and also terminal commands. I had to take a whole course on that. I fiddled with so many different text editors and IDEs, code blocks, Eclipse, Atom, Sublime, Emacs, Vim. And if that wasn't enough, I also decided I was gonna dab a little bit in website work and learn some HTML, CSS, and a little bit of WordPress, why not? All of this actually started when I moved from Virginia Wesleyan over to ODU. Their actual entry level programming language was C++ instead of Java. So when I came into ODU, I took an online course, it was CS333, because I had already taken Intro to Programming 1. This was actually Intro to Programming 1 and 2 combined into one single course, CS333. And they did C++, I don't recall exactly if we did code blocks. I think we used code blocks, but I may have also tried Sublime then because that's what my professor used. And if that was the case, and I also had to write a make file for my applications, 
Not sure. And what's really cool is I actually have the notes from conference one of that class, CS333, from January 13th, 2015. Starts off me saying, don't write code without a design. Keep a log of how I change my code. I note here, part one should be familiar, part two and three should seem new, because part one was basically the first class, Intro to Programming 1, which I had already taken, and part two and three was Intro to Programming 2, which I hadn't taken yet. Complete all of CS252 prior to midterms, that didn't happen. I, it was actually a co-requisite. CS252 was an introduction to Unix for programmers, learned a lot about Unix, learned a lot about terminal commands, that was all of the assignments there. Throughout that summer after, I think, is when I dabbled a little bit in WordPress, you know, I installed WAMP and did all that stuff, right? HTML and CSS, look at HTML5 up, I pulled down to some of those websites and just switched up things within there, used this as a base template and just made them my own. Actually, that's when I started using Atom for that type of work as well instead of Sublime Text. Not for any particular reason, just to test out a new technology. In the next semester, in fall of 2015, I got back into Java and we used Eclipse as IDE. 2016, actually the year I started my YouTube channel and started my whole uh, iDev journey, I was development journey, y'all may or may not remember that. But it started off before that. I continued learning C++, Java, and terminal commands, but I also took a SQL course, database course, did a little bit of work in SQL, and I took another course, uh, Principles of Programming Languages, or something along those lines, where I learned three different programming languages in a single semester. Pavre, Prolog, SML and J. Never used those languages ever since, but the whole point of that course was to teach you how to learn new programming languages. Take your principles that you learned in Java or C++ over into Prolog, Pavre, SML and J. What IDEs did I use for those three languages? Absolutely no clue. Like I said, never used it since. I think SML and J is very like, I don't, I don't think anybody uses it, to be honest with you. It's kind of weird. But then, I decided to start taking you along on YouTube, my IDEV journey, iOS development, course in Xcode, Swift, along with a new Udemy course. I think it was iOS 10 at that time. No, iOS 9. 2017 is when I finally got to the point in my college career where I could start taking the courses that I actually wanted to take instead of what I needed to take. And I chose web development as well as artificial intelligence. Oh, so nice. So for web development, I use LAMP stack. I actually built a Slack clone using the LAMP stack. LAMP is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and then PHP. And then for my introduction to artificial intelligence course, I use primarily Java and Python. We had five assignments, me and then a final assignment, and we could use whatever language we wanted, just get the job done, and that's what I used. I also started taking a course where I worked in a team. I think it was a software engineering course, because we got to get used to working in a team and doing all of that software engineering stuff. And we started creating this Android application where we used TensorFlow. And what it would do is it would basically, the application would say, all right, this cup, right? It, it identifies what it is, it says it's a cup, and then it translates cup into whatever language you want. So if you're out and about, say you're down in Costa Rica, you don't know Spanish, you would point your phone camera at the cup, it would highlight it, it would label cup, and it would say whatever the Spanish word is for cup. I also had an option to drop down and see the definition of cup, just to make sure it is the proper word you're looking for. Now, I'm not saying we actually completed all that. That project actually started in 2017 and ended once I graduated in 2018, but that was, that was a concept at least. In 2018, I finally graduated the computer science degree, but that spring semester before I graduated, I took an Android development course. I actually made a couple of videos on the channel about that. And like I said before, we finished up our machine learning Android application. For the Android course, I used Java and Android Studio for the IDE. And I actually built, I built a pizza app. I think you're able to order pizza on the app. I forget exactly what it did. And I also created just like little assignment apps that really weren't all that difficult. Continuing into 2018, I got my first job as a software engineer where I did Java, Spring, TypeScript, I was basically a full stack developer, did anything from SQL in the database, Java, Spring within Eclipse, HTML and TypeScript within VS Code. We use Jira for our project management. We use Bitbucket for our version control. But before all of that, before I actually got onto that contract where I did all of the Java and TypeScript in this whole full stack enterprise development work, I was actually able to work on a lot of these side projects that they wanted to work on, my team, but never had the opportunity to. So I worked a little bit with Vue.js, I worked with React Native, I did more web development work, and then I hopped over into exactly what I just said, which continued on into 2019. That was the main work that I did in 2019, Java, TypeScript, all of that that I just mentioned. And then in 2020, this year, subscribe to find out. 